Hello everyone and welcome back to Horizon Forbidden West. In the last session... Oh, hello, what's that up there? <laughs> is, that a, is that another crashed plane up there? Possibly. Something. Dunno. Anyway, yeah, in the last session we headed to do some side quests, a really long side quest, and got this sick new outfit, which I am in love with, and is uh, pretty good. And today, it is time to go to Ether's coordinates. This is a pretty big thing that we are about to do. This is one of the three main subroutines. We have never interacted with them before, but today we are going to go and try and stick them in a bottle and give them over to Gaia. That is the plan of action. That's a shame. Hope you survive. Good luck. Now this we cannot do yet. It is locked. We are unable to get the tall neck. Not sure how we will become able, but at some point we will get the ability to yeet ourselves into the air, I guess. I don't know. That seems to be what it's implying. What is that? Spikes now. Interesting. <laughs> I was like, have I seen that before? I don't think so. Little campfire there, lovely jubbly. Oh boy. I see a fucking storm bird up there, don't I? I think I just saw a storm bird. Am I gonna have to fight a storm bird to get Aether? Aether? Is it Aether or Ether? It's Ether, right? I'm getting close to Aether's location. And I said it would be in some kind of physical processor. This is cool. I wasn't expecting greenery for some reason. <laughs> I'm kind of taken aback by the greenery. I thought it was all gonna be like just desert, pretty much. So this is very neat. Campfire over here. An ancient ruin. Turned into a Tanakh stronghold. Could Ether be inside? Unknown settlement. It's not going to be easy with Tanakh's warriors everywhere. Mount can't enter. All right. F-38 Razor Wing. This F-38 Razor Wing is one of only four surviving planes used by Joint Task Force 10 during the Hot Zone Crisis. A sixth generation VTOL multi-role combat aircraft, it was designed for air superiority, strike missions, close air support, electronic warfare and intelligence gathering. Kindly donated to the museum by the Medina Society for Southwestern History. We love to see it. Oh, hi. Are you friendly? She struck a blow to us at the embassy. This much is true, but we are made of steel. We will not yield. Regala's forces may seem strong now, but- Her machines took out my entire squad. Remember the visions. The old ones didn't choose their fight, but still they stood firm. They didn't falter, and neither will we. Blood of the Ten, you've come to us. You know who I am? Oh, the warrior with hair like wildfire who defeated Regala's champion at Baron Lai. <laughs> yes, you are known to us. I am Dekka, chaplain of the Lowland clan. You've come to speak with Chief Hikaro. Not quite. There's, there's something I need here. Anything you need, the chief will provide. Come. Oh shit! I didn't realize this was where Hakaro was. Visions you were talking about? Yes. The records of the ten. I can show you them if you like. On the way to the chief. Did not realize this was going to be where Hakaro was. Okay, visions. I mean, they look like holographic displays. This was a museum, right? So. You'd probably go up to the hologram and... It would, it would be like that little mini-museum in the Frozen Wilds DLC. Uh, that was like, talking about the animals. These visions... You said they're the records of the Ten. 
Who are they? Old ones. Who fought a heroic battle against machines on this very soil long ago. Their deeds are honored in the visions. <laughs> At least what remains of them. To be remembered and exalted. There used to be more of these visions? Many more. Once this place was filled with light and sound. But over the years, they've fallen into darkness. One by one. That is why chaplains are so important to the tribe. We remember all we can of the visions. Etched in our flesh. Passed down by word of mouth from generation to generation. One day the whole grove may go dark. But chaplains who come after me will keep the memories alive. Cool. Uh, Hikaru, actually, talk, talk to me about chaplain. What does it mean to be a chaplain here? I mean, she kind of just told you. <laughs> our youth study the visions and share their wisdom with our young. What kind of wisdom? How to be a true warrior. To fight with bravery and unflinching honor. And to know when to call for peace. You can see for yourself when we go inside. Hikaru wants to see me? Why does Hikaru want to see me? We are at war with Regana. And you've already shown that you can stand against her. With ease. I'm not here to fight a war for you. Not for us. With us. But I won't try to persuade you. That is for the chief. He can be very convincing. <laughs> What's he going to do? Try and like lock us in a cage unless we do what he says kind of convincing. Torture us kind of convincing or actually convincing. All right. Let's go see Chief Akaro. He's in his throne room at the far end of the grove. Come. Be welcome among the records of the ten. The Memorial Grove. What is that? Unknown. Is that a drone thing? Can I, like, fuck you off and just go to see what this is? No. <laughs> okay. It's glitched. Incomplete. Joint Force 10 at you. Led by the the ten were dedicated soldiers, working together as a squad and sharing in their duty. And when the time came for battle, they took to the skies and leaped to glory. All Tanakh seek to follow their example. For the chief, it was one of the few things the clans had in common. Are the Tanath named like is is it ten for the these ten and then Ark for something else? Is that is there any link there, I wonder? Ten Ark. Seventy-three H exhibit. Was the origin of executive order that which used congressionally granted emergency powers to mandate the evacuations of most counties in the region outside of Los Angeles, Las Vegas, and Phoenix. Displaced families and individuals would be moved to temporary camps before places could be found for them in habitable areas. To enforce the order, the government threatened to nullify existing water agreements between the Northwest and Southwest, essentially turning off the taps for the so-called tri-state hot zone. To its supporters, 73H was a humanitarian effort designed to preserve resources and help climate-stricken southwestern families start new lives. To its opponents, the order was a clear bait-and-switch. The federal government had broken its deal with Medina in a greedy land grab that employed eminent domain to seize mining claims. At the same time, it would place southwestern refugees in fenced-in camps, which were quickly disparaged as 73 Hell, a provision that incited immediate data corrupted. Interesting, interesting. Most interesting, most interesting. It hasn't actually been that long. Well met, Aloy. 
I was hoping we'd run into each other again after the flood and bleeding mark. Hi. The Tika. So you did it. Huh. So she just wouldn't be here if I hadn't done that side quest it before coming here. It wasn't but yes. After you left, we laid Kentok to rest and I thought about what he said. He served his clan, his tribe, as best as he could. I have to do the same. I'm sure he'd be proud. And he'd reprimand me for allowing myself to be distracted. <laughs> Can't have that. Thank you again, Aloy. Strike true as the ten. She very qu quickly got what she wanted, huh? <laughs> That's cool. Because she just that she just wouldn't be here if we hadn't done that. During their war, the Ten climbed sheer rock, braving blinding snow and wind. They stopped at nothing to protect their own. You make them sound invincible. They weren't. But the visions tell us of their courage and strength. Something our soldiers aspire to. The Sky Clan admires this one above all the rest. They make their home in the mountains northwest of here. Interesting. Man versus Machine. Data Corrupted Exhibit shows holographic representations of all seven G-SYN battle drone models deployed during the conflict. JTF-10 rapidly made a mockery of G-SYN's non-lethal approach. In an engagement after engagement, whether it was a surprise artillery barrage from the frigid slopes of Gold Mountain north of Big Bear Lake, or a desert ambush near the solar plants in the Nevada desert, or a wingsuit jump in the jungles of Columbia to stop an attack on a rare earth convoy. JTF-10 soldiers repeatedly proved that state-of-the-art AI and newfangled weapons were no match for human cunning and... Uh, so that's the 10. JTF-10. Joint Task Force 10, maybe? Something like that? What's this one about? The Ten waged war against their enemy in the desert heat. A land too harsh for any to survive. But against all odds, they prevailed. So the Desert Clan does the same. You must have passed through their territory on the way here. I did. They seem a little... extreme. They take that as a compliment. Cool, 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 cool. Staff instructions. From Micah Kadori, director, to Andy Wright. Hi, Andy. Could you please inform relevant staff in maintenance, hosting, and security of the following new opening and closing protocols? I've already briefed Dwight and Shania at Musec. Thank you. Opening the gallery rooms. Holographic displays should all be live 15 minutes before opening time. Inspect showcases for smudges and wipe with dry cloth. Inspect outdoor areas for temperature and humidity. Closing. Make sure cleaning robots have finished their sanitation rounds. Sign off on cleaning, usually with Ned. Escort cleaners to staff entrance. Final rounds. Hand over to night security. Exit through staff entrance. Wow, what a, what a deeply interesting one that was. <laughs> well, I think we found the fucking throne room. Jesus, that looks cool. Let's do this first. Find this in my stash later. In the jungle, sealed by the darkness, trap their enemies. Soldiers in a jungle. Those were the ten? Yes. They knew how to use the jungle's depths to distract the enemy until the perfect moment to strike. Generations ago, my clan, the Lowland, looked to this one for inspiration as they claimed the jungle to the southwest. Cool. Hey, I found that thing I was looking for. <laughs> hey, Al you have an old world recording? This box was speaking with voices of the old ones, but now there's noise over them. Let me take a look. Where did you find this? We took it from an Asaram Delver. 
She was trying to steal it and other artifacts from Tanakh territory. The others were going to bury it in the sand with her. But then I heard the voices. Well, the data here is badly corrupted, but... Delta Juliet 9, you are weapons free and... Black box, right, that's that symbol. Good hunting. Copy that. We'll buy Zero Dawn the time you need. Delta Juliet 9, out. The voices of warriors from the past. And that Osiram wanted to sell them for shards. The bravery of the Ten should be remembered. I'm not sure what you mean by the Ten. These voices came from the final battle of the Old Ones. Another battle? I could learn more about it if I could find the other boxes. Oh, she wants them, right? That Delver did say there might be more recordings to be found in the wreckage of ancient flying machines. She claimed she had a way to locate them. Oh? Yeah. The box with the voice data on it is emitting a locator signal. I could use it to find the others. I've already found one. <laughs> if you do then, bring them back here. I will see to it that they're treated with proper respect. Whatever sacrifices were made by these ancient soldiers, we will honor them. Uh, trade in recordings. I've already found a recording. I'll take any you find. Uh, let me give you something for it. Uh. What? I can't scroll or anything. <laughs> Oh, I see. Wait, she's giving me something for free? Why would anyone choose, like, something like a Frost Claw Circulator over something incredibly rare when they're the same cost? If it costs one black box, surely you get the legendary stuff, like, every time. Also, Christ, they've got Scorchers in here, as well as the Stormbirds. Thunder Jaws, we knew. Tremor Tusk. Can't remember what a tremor tusk was. Maybe that's new. Um. I don't know. <laughs> I remember we needed a stormbird storm cannon. It was it was not until like the final upgrade of our outfit, but I mean, sure. Cool. Cheers. These voices will be kept here. They will be remembered. Do you get many Osirum Delvers in Tanakh's territory? Fewer every time we catch them, but those thieving rats would do anything for the shards. There'll always be some. I'll do anything oh, for shards, dear. Anything for Delvers shards, dear. Anything, so anything, anything Alive. for shards. <laughs> Uh, why well, collect the voices? Why do you want these recordings? Every battle teaches its soldiers. We should learn those lessons and honor those who fell. That is our way. This is the way. Do you know the way? If I find more of those recordings, I'll bring them back to you. Adios, amigo. Black box exhibit. Exhibit allows us to hear their final moments using an interface donated by Sterling Malkeet. We can listen to any flight recorder that employs the industry standard Air FR encryption protocol version 3.5.4 or later. Simply place a black box in the interface to listen. Maintain a respectful silence as you hear the voices of the fallen. F. Big rips. Big rips, big Fs in chat. The Memorial Grove. Carefully written Kaja glyphs with Fashav's personal mark. Evidently part of a diary or journal. From Decca, the wise and patient chaplain of the Lowland clan, I finally learned the answer to a question that had long vexed me. Before my capture, the only Tanakh that I ever had a conversation with, if one could call it that, was a prisoner at Sunstone Rock who spoke of taking the blood of blood and children of her enemies as her own. Her rant seemed to confirm the lurid stories about the Tanakh that I had read in my youth. Yet in all my time in the Forbidden West, I have never seen such barbaric practices. I wanted to know if there was truth to the prisoner's words. There was. Those were the old ways, Decker clarified, dating from the constant warfare between clans of years past. Since the ascension of Chief Harako, Hikaro rather, such practices have been outlawed, though not completely abolished, a few stray recalcitrants and exiles still cling to them. Intriguingly, the acts themselves were never as malicious as the Kaja portrayed them to be. 
Tasting the blood of a fallen foe was meant to honour their martial deeds, and orphaned children were taken from conquered settlements to be raised as equal members of their new clan, which was considered to be a merciful outcome. I cannot help but see myself in this context, an orphan of sorts taken in by a new tribe. It hasn't been easy, and there are still those in the clan lands who would reject me. Still, the more I learn about my new people, the more that I see nobility that the Kaja have omitted from their records. Fucking Kaja, mate. Fucking Kaja lies. Focus can detect beacons from those recording devices. Should help me to find any others that are still out there. Huge pog. Does that like mark them on the map? It does. It marks them on the map. We love to see it. Except, it's only marked like one. <laughs> uh, yep. It's it's literally only marked that single one. <laughs> That's weird. There's like ten more to get. Why would it mark just one? Whatever. Doo -doo. Hall of Heroes. Welcome to the Hall of Heroes. This room is dedicated to the memories of Roberto Medina, who financed and led the campaign against the federal government and its fleet of General Synthetics battle drones. Colonel Edward de la Hoya, Commander of JTF-10, the brilliant strategist and veteran soldier who held off numerically superior federal forces. Colonel Anne Faraday, the legendary orator who oversaw early reconciliation efforts. And all those who lost their lives during the campaign and at the Battle of Mojave? 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 <laughs> I don't know. Not a clue how you pronounce that. But, uh, nice. Hello, here to see the king. The chief is inside. The chief, rather. Are you ready to see him? So fucking ready. I'm ready. I'm ready to see the Master Chief. I'm ready. Good. I need a weapon. Come. Master Chief's voice is so deep, I can't get that deep. I, I need a weapon. <laughs> I need a weapon. <laughs> Did I? Can't do it. Not even close. <laughs> What's he doing? He's just chilling behind the rock? <laughs> like, get on your fucking throne, mate. Come and talk. It's underneath the throne. Oh, well, that's going to be a pain in the ass to get to then. They're not going to fucking let me, are they? He's not got an arm. Soon, Wait, who's that? Catalo. Who's Catalo? The savior of Meridian. Hi. I am told you held back Regala's forces outside Baron Light. And defeated her champion, Grutta, in single combat. I sure did. Impressive. Correct. I met Fashav there, too. He said you were a great warrior and a man of honor. His death is a painful loss among many. We will not soon recover from the massacre of our marshals. But if you are here to pledge your service, that could help considerably. I am not here to fight for you. I need something in that basement. Something that will save many lives, yours included. It's not something you can see, but it is there. I have seen it. You have named your price. Now I name mine. With my marshals dead, I need your spear. Help me defeat my enemies, and I will grant you access to the chamber below. I don't have a price. I am not a hired killer. I'm here to save lives, more than you can count. I count the corpses of marshals slain. I count hundreds more to knock them. Whose lives hang in the balance, I will fight for them. I will kill anyone who threatens the peace, and you will too, if you want me to open the door to the chamber below. Okay. So by that logic, what's stopping me from killing you right now? And taking what I need to save everyone? That's pretty yikes to say. <laughs> you could try. You might even succeed. Either way, you must fight. My way 
might hold off Regala and the slaughter she craves. Fine. What do you need? I need more marshals to keep the tribe together. Such warriors can only be promoted at a trial by combat called the Cool Route. Yeah, we heard about that. I sent out a call for the competition. Since Regala seeks to undermine me, she is certain to attack it. She'll want to kill me in front of the assembled clans. So what, you want me to be your bodyguard? No. To defend the Cool Route. But there is more. Knowing Regala will attack, one of the clans have balked at sending their contestants. You must go north and force Tecote, the commander of the Sky Clan, to submit and send his best. Force him to submit? Do whatever is necessary. I can't hold the cool route with two of the three clans in attendance. Marshal Cathala will assist you. He was maimed at Baron Light, but he can still be of use. I sent him ahead to the northern village of Stonecrest. Meet him there, and he will guide you to the Sky Clan stronghold. If you have any questions about your mission, now is the time. Oh boy, it's question time for Sharp. I really like this guy. I really like this guy. He's got a great voice <laughs> and nice chill personality. He's like, he's another, he's, he's basically the Avard of the West, basically. Like, just a good, decent ruler. I mean, from the little interaction we've seen so far and from hearing others' opinions on him. Seems, seems like a decent dude. I'm liking, I'm liking the theme of rulers that aren't complete pieces of shit. <laughs> you know? Oh, it's refreshing. I'm sorry about Fashav. He seemed like a good man. More than a man. A bridge between Tanakh and Karja. No outlander ever earned our respect as he did. I had hoped he would be my voice in Meridian. That peace with the Karja might become something more. An alliance? An exchange. The Karja have much we lack. Our deeds are written in ink upon our bodies. Our memories die with our flesh. But the Karja never forget. Their deeds are written in book and scroll. You wanted to learn from them? As I learned from Fashav. He will be missed. Okay. Uh, Regala. Fashav called Regala your greatest mistake. Why? Because he didn't kill her. <laughs> really? I fought against her forces at Baron Light, and I don't even know what her problem is. She was the deadliest of my marshals, the point of my spear. So what happened? Above all, Regala despises the Karja who burned her younger brothers alive. After Understandable then. the red raids and tore down the battlements of Baron Light, she hoped to chase them all the way to Meridian. She could not see the cost of such a war, nor the benefits of peace after the Mad Sun King fell. When I accepted Avad's entreaties, she went mad, called me traitor, challenged me before the marshals. Okay, did you accept? Did you beat her? What did you do when Regala challenged you? If you were to knock, you would know that such a challenge cannot be refused. So you won then? It was not easy to subdue her. I bear seven scars from that fight. The other marshals wanted me to execute her on the spot. But I found I could not sever the bond between us. Her loyalty had been as boundless as her rage, so I spared her. Rather than mercy, she took it as a humiliation, one she will never be free from. Well, that is one way of looking at being allowed to continue living. <laughs> Personally, if I, well, I mean, I would never challenge someone to a fight, but still, if I was uh, in that situation and they beat me and were like, hey, Gonna let you live. I'd be like, thanks for that. I'll be on my bike then. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so Regala wants you dead. She does. But that will not be enough. She won't rest until all three clans fall in behind her as she marches on Meridian. Who knows? With machines under her control, perhaps she can raise it to the ground. 
It's been tried before. I was about to say that. <laughs> I was about to say machines have tried to take Meridian and failed. The cool root. What exactly is the cool root? Where once the clans fought each other, now we fight as one against the machines. That is my law made manifest in the cool root. Each clan must send contestants whenever I call for the ritual. These contestants face trial by combat against machines in an arena just beyond these walls. Those who distinguish themselves become marshals who bind the tribe together as peacekeepers. You called them peacekeepers, but the marshals I met at the embassy were warriors. Warriors, yes, but more. They renounce the clan that birthed them and pledge themselves to order and peace. They enforce my law. They settle disputes and stand for Tanakh in parlay with other tribes. Without them, I cannot rule. Which is why you must ensure the next cool route takes place. Alrighty. The Sky Clan, then. Why won't the Sky Clan send contestants to the Because <laughs> they know Regala's going to attack three it. clans, they have the most defensible base, protected by a mighty wall called the Bulwark. Their commander believes he can wait out the war between Regala's forces and my own, safe behind his barrier. Staying strong, while you and Regala weaken each other. You think like a seasoned marshal. Good. So, why me? Why send me to deal with the Sky Clan? All to not respect strength, and you drove Regala back at Baron Light. That and most of your marshals are dead? Correct. What about Catalo? Can't he do it by himself? He is main. They will no longer respect him. That hardly seems fair. What is fair about losing an arm? Whether they respect him or not, Catalo still has worth. He knows the Sky Clan. He was raised in their base. He will guide you well. All right. And the chamber below. You said you saw what's in the basement? I did. On the day of my greatest victory. What do you mean? For a dozen generations, the three clans battled for control of this hallowed ground. Only I achieved it. I fought for years. Killed whoever stood in my way. When I had finally slain all rivals... I stood alone in the grove. Victory was mine to save her, or so I thought. Thunder roared from the east, and a bolt of blue struck this place. That chamber. Gaia dies, and Aether arrives. All around me, the visions of the grove grew louder and brighter, and suddenly a new one appeared before me. The old one spoke. And what they said changed everything. Yeah. What did the old ones say to you in this new vision? The one called Faraday foretold the growing danger of the machines. And said we must unify to stop them. She called for marshals to enforce the peace. Then the vision faded, never to be seen again. I marked the spot where it shone with my spear. And I took Faraday's words to heart. Renounced war between the clans. Trained warriors to fight machines. That's and crazy. Marshals through the cool route. Since then, the tribe has been at peace. Until Regala attacked at Baron Light. And the chamber beneath the throne. You went in after the vision? I did. Inside is an ancient device. It hummed with power. You will see it for yourself after the cool route. This I swear. That is so crazy. Like, the course of his entire life changed because Gaia decided to destroy herself to try and defeat Hades and they all scattered and it just so happened that one of them, Aether, landed right here and he saw a recording from long ago that has nothing to do with him but he took it to mean to be applicable to current times and that changed his life, that changed the course of all the people's lives in these clans in the east, uh, in the west rather. Like, that's crazy. <laughs> it's just such a monumental shift in the, like, history of this world. Just because of that one thing landing here that one time. Right? <laughs> it's cool. I'll do what you want and go north to deal with Dakota. But you'd better not forget about our deal. You will have what was promised. 
if you succeed. I trust him. He Speak seems he Decker seems decent. On your way out. She will arm you for the road ahead. I would be very shocked if this guy betrayed us. I would be shocked and saddened as I execute him. What else do you need? You assume nothing else? No. I should go. Dismissed. I really like his voice. I really like his voice. Medina exhibit. Da -da -da. Defiance of the federal government, Medina declared that he would dedicate all the profits of his mines to habitation efforts, helping as many southwesterners as possible stay on their land. This unselfish rallying cry echoed throughout the hot zone, causing other mining interests and businesses to follow suit. The federal government responded by following through on its threat to cut off water supplies, but this only galvanized the protest movement. Medina's al alliance signed a multi-year multi -year agreement with the South American water cartel Merisur, a joint effort by Data Corrupted. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Most interesting. Anything back here that I should be taking notice of? Have I read that one? I don't think so. Uh, among these was Colonel Edward de la Hoya, commander of JTF-10, a deeply charismatic officer with family ties to Roberto Medina. De La Hoya grew up near the Arizona-Nevada border and was she was respons and was responsible for having the task force based near T Tucson. Several of his subordinates had families in the area. All of them were apoplectic about 73H, des despising it as an unforgivable federal overreach. The threat of being driven off their land, no matter how uninhabitable it had become, resonated with soldiers throughout the unit and beyond, many of whom were from conservative states or areas affected by climate change. As the Merisur agreement took shape, Medina consulted with De La Hoya, who then took the case to his top lieutenants. Everybody agreed that the federal government was likely to send drones against the water fleet. De La Hoya, who came to prominence as a pilot, told the others that he was prepared to single-handedly take on the drone squadron in... Data Karapid. That was that one, right? Yeah. Anything else around here? Yes. Faraday exhibit. The job went to Anne Faraday, born and raised in the hot zone and a colonel in the Air Force. When De La Hoya instigated the takeover of bases in the region, she had been a dissenter and so didn't fight in the war, but was instrumental in peacefully evacuating other neutral personnel. During the conflict, she became one of the nation's leading voices for a non-violent solution, which combined with her familiarity with the region and military background made her credible to both sides. Three months into her appointment, Faraday, Faraday gave an address to Congress, ostensibly as a progress report, but actually a ringing statement of purpose. She transcended her usual plain-spoken military directness, passionately highlighting the need for community and unity in the face of an uncertain future dominated by climate change and increased automation. It came to be regarded as one of the finest moments of oratory in Data Corrupted. I like the data data. We like the data data. This is a invisible wall. Why is it an invisible wall when there's an actual real wall right there, which you could have just used instead of an invisible wall here? That is a very strange decision, but I will allow it. Best move out. Marshal Catalo is waiting for you. Indeed. All right. Well, time to visit the Sky Clan and get access.